What's wrong with the old black book my daddy used to read from? Is it so outdated by modern translation? Revised standard and good news are everywhere I look. Oh, won't somebody tell me what's wrong with the old black book? People who know not my God just cannot understand The spiritual inspired word of God not given by some man They've all agreed by joining hands in a worldwide movement To change that blessed old black book to set out to improve it What's wrong with the old black book my daddy used to read from? Is it so outdated by modern translations? By standard and good news are everywhere I look. Oh, won't somebody tell me what's wrong with your black book? Jesus said, I am the shepherd, my sheep follow me. As the voice of the stranger speaks, they shall turn and flee. The words my daddy used to read, I've learned to love so dear. But all these other words I hear, strangers to my ears. What's wrong with the old black book my daddy used to read from? Is it so outdated by modern translations? Revised standard and good news are everywhere I look. So won't somebody tell me what's wrong with the old black book? Well, the enemy is much too smart to jump right in and say, just forget all that you have learned of God, cause it's not true anyway. And they're making plans in years to come to take God from our minds by giving us new Bibles changed a little bit each time. What's wrong with the old black book my daddy used to read from? Is it so outdated by modern translations? Revised standard and good news are everywhere I look. Oh, won't somebody tell me what's wrong with the old black book? What's wrong with the old black book my daddy used to read from? Is it so outdated by modern translations? Revised standard and good news are everywhere I look. Oh, won't somebody tell me what's wrong with the old black book? Somebody tell me There's no one who can tell me What's wrong with the old King James King James Conquering now and still to conquer, rideth a king in his mind, leading the host of all the faithful into the midst of the fight. See them with courage advancing, clad in their brilliant array, shouting the name of their leader, hear them exultingly say, not to the strong is the battle. Not to the swift is the race, yet to the true and the faithful, victory is promised through grace. Conquering now and still to conquer, who is this wonderful king? Whence are the armies which he leadeth, while of his glory they sing? He is our Lord and Redeemer, Savior and monarch. They are the stars that forever bright in his kingdom will shine. Conquering now and still to conquer, Jesus thou ruler of all. Thrones and their scepters all shall perish, crowns and their splendor shall Shall the army thou leadest, faithful and true to the last, find in thy mansions eternal, rest when their warfare is past. Not 
to the strong is the battle, how to the swift is the race, yet to the true and the faithful, victory is promised through the race. Now to the strong is the battle, how to the swift is the race, yet to the true. Man, all right. We will keep it going here for a few more minutes uh, until we get everybody on here. I'd like to give people some time, but uh, praise the Lord uh, for that music, good godly music. And uh, I like these that a little peppier here to get us going here, get us started. want to see him and look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice as i journey through this land singing as i go pointing souls to calvary to the crimson flow many arrows pierce my soul from without within but my lord leads me on through him i must win oh i want to see him and look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory just let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to In valleys low I look Toward the mountain height And behold my Savior there Leading in the fire Hand toward the valley so low, guiding me. I can see as I onward go, when before me billows rise from the mighty deep. Then my Lord directs my path, He does safely keep. And He leads me gently on through this world below. And He's a real friend to me, oh I love Him so. And oh I want to see Him, just look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On those streets of glory, just let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Man, that's some good singing. Let's see here. Uh, how about... Let's see. Oh, that's the one I just had. Let's see. And we'll switch it up a little. How about... We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time Somber skies and howling tempest off succeed a bright sunshine In that land of perfect day when the mist have rolled away We will understand it better by and by By and by when 
the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by We are often destitute of the things that life demands Want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands We are trusting in the Lord and according to His word We will understand it better by and by Oh, by and by when the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Trials dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God would lead us To that blessed promised land But He guides us with His eye And we'll follow till we die For we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home we will tell the story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home we will tell the story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by And we'll understand it better by and by. Last one. We're on the battlefield for Jesus Come and join us in the fight We're marching against Satan And we're standing for what's right We won't desert nor surrender We are soldiers till we die We're on the battlefield for Jesus Victory is our battle cry We're on the battlefield for Jesus Come and join our happy throng We're blood-washed, born-again believers And we sing a joyful song King Jesus is our mighty captain And it's Him we shall obey We're on the battlefield for Jesus Winning souls for Christ today Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is due Him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood We're on the battlefield for Jesus Come and join us in the fight Though the enemy be all around us We shall not be put to flight By faith we know we have the victory And no matter what the cost We will fight to rescue hopeless sinners Not a soul must ever be lost Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is due Him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cross
cleansing flood. Amen and amen. We are back. Well, I'm back anyway, but we're all back together, aren't we? Uh, OPBC Online, a ministry of Old Pass Baptist Church. Meeting house in Northfield, Minnesota. The famous Northfield, Minnesota. And on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Northfield's favorite son made his return, yours truly, walked out and preached as soon as I walked out there. All I did was step on the sidewalk. I had no banners up, no signs up, stepped on the sidewalk. As soon as they drove, as, as people drove by, they gave me the finger. Right away. The infamous Northfield's favorite son. And then, boy, did we start preaching, and man, did the devils come out from everywhere. Crawling out of everywhere. And brought people with them. And boy, were they angry. Those young kids were angry. They're mad because somebody actually tells them the truth. Very angry. But. As you've seen in this video here, if you haven't watched it yet, we were assaulted. I was assaulted twice. I got punched once. Second time, I got spit on. And uh, that's the ministry, the public ministry in this world today. Especially in Northfield, Minnesota. If you're going to preach in Northfield, Minnesota, I'm going to tell you what. Them kids are little, little wicked heathens. Or like Grandpa Cooley likes to call them, wicked heathens. Heathens. That is a Chetty. That is the Chetty Yeti version of the Bible. Heathens. Anyway, so we had a jam-packed weekend of preaching and tracting. We got out nearly, I think it was 67, 6,800 tracks over the weekend. We uh, were able to preach for hours. Made the cops mad because I turned the amp on. Voices were getting kind of tired on Saturday night. Cop came by and looked at me and he was like, you know you're not allowed to do that. And you're lucky I'm giving you a warning. I shouldn't even be giving you a warning. I'm like, well, what if your ordinance is unconstitutional? Which we are going to find out about because I took it up to the point of him chilling my rights. So he basically told us, if you don't shut that off, I'm going to cite you. Well, that's all we needed to hear. I don't have to get a ticket. He already chilled my rights. I don't have to get a ticket. So that was enough. So we need to take the footage. So we're going to take the footage and send it off to the attorney and let them try to send a letter to Northfield, the good, good chief of Northfield. But you know, you want to hear something funny? I was louder than the amp. Brother Paul and I, we just decided to lift up our voice, and we got loud. 
And I mean, we preached loud and God gave us the strength to do it and we blasted it. We blasted it. Down the, you could hear us all the way down the corner, the other corner. Man, was it loud. It was louder. Man, I had Jezebels yelling at me while I was preaching across the street. Whole gang of little Jezebels mad at me, yelling at me. Telling me to shut up. Right? Boy, they were mad. So we got a recap video. We have a recap video we'll be putting out there sometime. Andrew's going to finish it. We did we did a, a recap video, so we'll have that. I took a few days off, didn't do a broadcast on Monday because my voice needed the rest. Because I had preached Saturday night pretty hard. Sunday morning, I preached the morning message. That was about an, that's usually about an hour long and and then uh I knew I was pretty much done. I need to take a break for a while. Cuz we preached a lot. I all the guys preached a lot on Saturday night. Saturday all day. So what what an event. What a time. Cops finally showed up after we called them. We didn't call them on Friday. They showed up and didn't do anything, of course. I didn't press charges, of course. But that young man, he's going to get hurt by somebody someday if he acts that way. Won't be me. I've been preaching for 10 years and uh, out there on the streets and I never heard anybody yet and I don't intend to. But somebody, that kid's going to get hurt if he treats men like that. There's men out there that aren't very nice. So hopefully that young man gets, gets saved. Because that's his dire need right now is to be saved. By the grace of God and have his sins forgiven. You know, that's, that's the need of the hour for that young man. Somebody asked about that. You know, don't you get angry? Not really. I wasn't angry with him. Uh. But anyway, it is um That's right. He had faith the faith enough to know you'd be peaceful because of Christ. That's right. And we told them that they always accuse us of all kinds of things. And we told them, you know what? We're not violent people. We don't, we don't hurt anybody. We don't do that. We'll tell you the truth about your sin and tell you that you're in trouble with God. But at the end of the day, that's between you and the Lord, what you do. Anyway, so I hope you're doing well and out there and Hopefully you got to tune into some of the preaching out there and you know, you got to be careful. That's why we put a viewer discretion advised on there. But we'll see uh, how that goes in the future here. We'll keep you up to date on that when we find out uh, anything new about how that all works and everything. But we are going to talk about charismania today, absolute insanity, 
Charismania. And here's the reason why. We were at the state fair about three weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I don't know. Time flies by when you're having fun. And I was given this. Well, one of my men picked this up. They saw this and they said, Pastor, I think you're going to you're gonna really like this one. You need to t check this out. And I said, okay, I will. And I started looking at it. Now, I believe that most charismatic churches are witches. I believe that most of them are absolute witches. I believe they teach witchcraft. I believe they initiate into witchcraft. I believe they, they uh, confuse people. And I believe they teach things that are contrary to the word of God and the faith once delivered unto the saints. And I believe their teachings are extremely dangerous. And I absolutely, 100%, enjoy flatlining, leveling everything that they teach. I, I agree with flatlining it, proving that what they are teaching is absolute error. Because it's distracting people from the scriptures, from the word of God, into prophecies and vain delusions, vain visions of men, fake and phony prophecies, witchcraft. So, I'm going to show you this. This is called Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Of all places, it's a Pentecostal denomination founded in Yaba, Lagos. Lagos State, Nigeria. Now, if there's any scam that's out there, it's probably from Nigeria. Because that's, for some reason, the scam capital of the world. A lot of witches, a lot of witchcraft there. By the way, a lot of this, a lot of witchcraft there. If you serve the Lord in the ministry and everything over there, there's a, there's a lot of witchcraft there. All right. So we know full well that's that's what most of these these organizations teach. This is the history of this organization. This guy, this founder, oh, he's got all these prophecies for 2017. Back then in the day. Year of triumph. All those who involve corruption will suffer, will, su will suffered it. A year of givers and uncommon blessings. It's like saying, if you eat that chili, you're going to get gas. If you eat too much garlic, you might get gas. Okay? Yeah, that's probably going to happen. It's probably true. That's probably going to happen. But that's not really a prophecy. It's a year where the last laugh. Okay? A year heaven will honor prayer targeted to victory. Ah. Uh, okay? When the salt will attack on the owner of the salt. What in the world does that even mean? 
A year of fanatics, new beginnings, so many people. A year of a double-edged vengeance. A year where warfare mentality is a prerequisite for survival. A year of satanic recruitment to cage young girls, teenagers, serious prayers are needed. Basically, it's a year for everything that's been going on. A very rough year for Jonah. A very, a very rough year for Jonah Christians. What in the world is he talking about? A year where garlic makes you gas. No, he didn't say that. I did. A year of redemption for many lands that are in contend. Okay. So basically, what you're really saying is none of this stuff makes any sense at all. He's making it all up. Out of his stupid, foolish, witchy poo mind. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yep. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. He's just making it up. He wouldn't do that, would he? Oh, yes, he would. Yes, he would. So who are these dudes and dudettes? Well, they're a cult. Say, but people accuse you of being a cult. Yeah, I know. It's funny. All the time. I mean, all the time. We get accused of being a cult all the time. You must be a cult because you believe the Bible. Well, that doesn't make you a cult. According to the, it's not part of the occult. But these people are witches. And instead of delivering people, what they actually do is enslave people. Let's see. Paul talked about these men. They are false, false brethren. They are crept in unawares. They seek to bring you into bondage. The bondage of sin. That's the work that they do. Okay. So mountain of fire and miracle ministries. What are they? The reason why this, this caught my eye so much is because this was dropped off right where I was preaching, we were tracting with the gospel. I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to send it to you. Hang on a second. I'm going to do my, you know how absolutely professional I am. You know, there are people that are professional. I am what you would call 
professional. You understand that? Some of you can't even understand that, can you? I, I, I'm speaking so light years. I am professional, not professional. I am professional. Okay. So. There I was. Minding my own business. Preaching the gospel. And there I was. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, what happened? Weird stuff. Hang on, I got to find my... I got stuck in the meta universe here. I gotta switch my accounts around. Hold on. Okay. So there I was. Preaching the gospel. Telling men that they need to be saved by the grace of Almighty God before it's too late. Before they split hell wide open. And then, this was dropped off to me. And I thought, what in the world is this? See, they focus on, they say, deliverance. Deliverance is being saved. Deliverance is being saved by the grace of Almighty God. It's being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I don't believe in this nonsense that people need to be delivered after they're saved from all of these things that are on this list that I'm going to read to you. I don't believe it. I don't believe they need to be. I, I believe in a salvation that changes men. I believe in the power of the regeneration of the Holy Ghost of God. I believe what the Bible says here. I'm going to show you this. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In verse number 36, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Two witnesses to make you free. One, the truth shall make you free. Knowing the truth. And who is that truth? The Son of God. If the Son, therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. That's deliverance. I don't believe in saved, possessed people. I don't believe you got to cast devils out of saved people. I don't believe that nonsense. 
I don't believe it at all. I think it's a bunch of garbage. I think it's a gospel from hell is what it is. I think it's a charismatic cheap parlor trick. That's what I think it is. I think it's a charismatic cheap parlor trick. So we're going to read these today. About deliverance. Then we're going to show you what the Bible says about deliverance. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, a lot of people really, really, really want to blame everything on the devil. A lot of Christians want to do that. They want to blame everything on the devil. Right? You don't get to blame everything on the devil. When you get the Holy Ghost of God, you get sealed under the day of redemption. When you get saved by the grace of God, you don't get to blame the devil. You have the Spirit of God inside of you, moving in your heart, moving in your life, leading you, guiding you into all truth. His ministry, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, which, which, by the way, let me say this to you. Are you ready for this? I'm going to go on record and make a lot of people mad. You ready? These people that accuse us, when we look at them and we tell them what they're doing is wrong, and they accuse us when we don't believe in their false gifts and their unbiblical manifestations, like Catherine Crick, like Benny Hinn, like Oral Ripoff. They make accusations against us, but what they're actually doing is blaspheming the Holy Ghost because they are taking away from the true work that the Spirit of God came for. And that was to teach you all things whatsoever Jesus had commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The ministry of the Holy Ghost is to guide you into the scriptures. To guide you through the scriptures. He shall teach you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is the work of the, of the Spirit to teach you the scriptures, to open up your understanding to the word of God and to guide you through it. But instead, they have you be in some kind of a, of a, a Holy Ghost superhero. Man, I had a charismatic guy one time. I was preaching uh, we were preaching downtown years ago, and the guy walked up, slapped me in the face. <laughs> he was a nut, man. Man, that guy. And he took his hand like this, and he got up close to me, and he went, Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! 
Holy Ghost! As if he was like throwing the Holy Ghost at me. As if he was like throwing the Holy Spirit at me or something. Totally ignorant. Totally ignorant. Now, so this pamphlet that I received literally has like 50 things on it about who needs deliverance. So, we're going to read some of these. Because they're insane. And the things that they are pushing are totally unbiblical. Have nothing to do with 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 uh, with the, their version of deliverance is to cast devils out of you. That's their version. Remember, like the other videos that we've done, just one dose of the Holy Ghost? That guy was singing that song, just one dose of the Holy Ghost. Remember him? Remember the laughing revival? Psh, 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 psh. You ready to wrap this thing up? Remember that one? We should throw together a montage of all the greatest charismatic hits. Anyway. Number one, they said, what is deliverance? Deliverance is, a, is to close the doors open to the enemy. Deliverance means to close the doors open to the enemy. Well, salvation does that. Number two, deliverance is to damage the works of Satan in one's life. By the way, you'll notice that there's no Bible for anything they're saying. Number three, deliverance is to undo heavy burdens. Not necessarily. Sometimes God wants you to have heavy burdens. Sometimes God has given us heavy burdens. These people, when they preach things, they preach things that are contrary to the scriptures. They tell you, well, if you're really delivered, then you won't have any heavy burdens. That's not true. It's a lie. Sometimes God doesn't want you delivered from those. There are times that God has you have those burdens. Number four. Deliverance is to break evil yokes. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden light, right? Jesus' yoke, we take his yoke upon us and we learn of him for he is meek and lowly in heart. And we shall find rest for our souls. Del number five, deliverance is to possess one's possession. What in the world? That's just like charismatic gobbledygook. I can't stand when they say stupid things like that. It's like the loss when I'm out on the street preaching. They say like Pete, they, they say like love is love, and that's when I look at them and say pizza is pizza. Number six, deliverance is to escape from every satanic prison. So right now, if you're in a satanic prison. then deliverance means that you'll escape from the satanic prison. K. 
Okay. Number seven, deliverance is to capture back what the enemy has stolen. Listen to me. Anything Satan has stolen from me, I don't need anyway. Because as a child of God, Satan can't take anything from me that God doesn't want him to. If God chooses to take something out of my life and let Satan take something from me, I didn't need it. Otherwise, if God deemed that I needed it, then he wouldn't let Satan have it. Number eight. Deliverance is to be victorious in one's dreams at all times. Okay, so this is where it gets weird. So this is like that um, lucid dreaming, right? You're supposed to be able to control your dreams at all times. That means that God, what God has done is given you the ability if you get truly delivered, then you'll be able to control your dreams at all times. Right? Wrong. You're going to be able to control your dreams at all times. Does God say that? No. Ooh. Uh oh. I don't know what that was about. Hopefully, it didn't cut anything off. Good thing we're still going here. I hope. Yeah, we are. Okay. I don't know what happened there. I think I made the devil mad. Not sure. <laughs> so it just disappeared on me. Okay. Number nine, deliverance is to serve quit notice on every infirmity. Okay. Let's look at that. Is that right there? Thank you. Let's look at that. What did Paul say about that? Second Corinthians 12, nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly. Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay. Well, what did he say? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Well, is that correct then? No, he's teaching something that's false. God never said he's going to take away all your infirmities. Right? Look what an infirmity is. 
an unsound or unhealthy state of body, weakness, feebleness, old age, weakness of mind, failing, fault, foible. Anxiety, mental health disorders, depression, physical infirmities. God never said he was going to take those all away. God never said those were going to all go away. He never said that once. In heaven they will. But not on this earth. God said that we'll have infirmities. So what he's teaching is a lie. What these charismatics are teaching is a lie. You can't serve a quit notice on all infirmities. In fact, the Lord has made my ministry stronger, my impact to help others stronger through the infirmities that he has given me. And I can't be proud about that, but I can glory in the infirmities because they weaken my flesh. Meaning I have to trust the Lord more. That his grace is sufficient. And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. My reproaches and necessities and persecutions. You know what happened after that kid punched me in the stones? And I got spit on? I'll show you. Happy are ye, but if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Rejoice. Happy are ye. Cops ask me, you want to press charge against him? No, I don't want to press charges against him. I just want him to know that he can't do that to others. Somebody might hurt him. Other people say, well, I would have pressed charges against him. That's fine. God will deal with him. The Bible says, happy are ye. We can rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. What's the Bible say about that? Look at this. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen? Happy are ye. Glory and infirmities, reproaches and persecutions. Because you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Nobody can take them away from me. Those are my war wounds that were given in the, in the service of my king. 
whether it was false brethren crept in unawares, whether it was Judas or Simon the Sorcerer or the Betrayers and anything else I've been through my ministry, I rejoice in those things. Why? Because the power of Christ resteth upon me. Because I'm still preaching the book. I'm still serving God by the grace of Almighty God through all those infirmities and depressions and everything else. And nobody can take those away from me. But you can't, there's no pride in that because they don't feel good to your flesh. That's why God does it that way, friend. Hope you're learning something today. Besides thinking I might be a little crazy or something, but uh, other than that. Number 10, deliverances to kill every satanic embargo. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to kill every satanic embargo. Every satanic embargo. Here we go. That's a an embargo. Let's see. That's a let's see. Our uh, let's see. Well, that's a, to hinder or prevent ships from sailing out. That's the. I know what they mean by it. The authority of Satan. To deliverance is to kill every satanic embargo. Number 11, deliverance is to break every evil covenant. I don't have any evil covenants when I get saved. Number 12, deliverance is to destroy the chains of darkness. Jesus already destroyed them. Look at what the Bible says here. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I believe that's... Actually, it's Acts 20. 20. Here it is. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Number 13, deliverance is to break curses and spells. Whoops. Deliverance is to break curses and spells. See, let's see.
Somebody called for it. I got to play it. And he's telling him about these these encounters with Bigfoot that he's having. The Nephilim, 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 Nephilim. And, and I lifted up my sword. Crazy. And I was like, and he was like, and I was like, <laughs> I'm getting my shotgun. I'm getting my 45. <laughs> Tent spiritual warfare. <laughs> Give me my gun. Give me my 50 cal. Give me my, my Uzi, whatever I got. Just give me something. And I'm blowing these things away. The okay. Earth. So you aimed your prayer. What are you like? A prayer? You got a prayer bazooka? You got a prayer <laughs> missile? I aimed in strong spiritual warfare i aimed my prayers at that side boom and i fired this sounds like intense spiritual warfare he did spiritual warfare prayer and 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 strong spiritual warfare i guess whatever that is those are the key words strong spiritual warfare i'm gonna take my guns and i'm gonna get my car and i'm gonna go home I'm going home. I'm not sitting in the woods with a bunch of whatever they are. And we did strong spiritual warfare. Strong spiritual warfare. Yeah, and yeah. I did strong warfare. Because we're in strong <laughs> spiritual warfare. Go home. If there was some Bigfoot crazy psychotic devilish creature out there that was growling and grunting and backmasking Led Zeppelin songs to me all night. I, I'm not going to sleep, bro. No way, I, dude. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not sleeping with that thing there. We both did intense spiritual warfare. And I saw golden roosters. When Bigfoot didn't touch me and left me alone, I did strong spiritual warfare. Bigfoot ran. It, the struggle is real. That's the truth, man. They won't be hairy. They won't stink. Intense spiritual, spiritual warfare. warfare. Glory in the upper bowl. And he shoots the glory at him. And glory in the lower bowl. And he... What? Tie you can... <laughs> This Bigfoot was talking to my mind telepathically. Okay, then it was in a biological container. What are hoops? Like, whoop, whoop. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, it's still, it's still good, man. After all these years, it's still good. I still love it, man. Anyway, uh, from the great state of Alabama, Ralph Caballero. Hello, Ralph. Okay, so continuing down the list. Uh, deliverance is to break every evil covenant. Deliverance is to destroy the chains of darkness. Deliverance is to break the curses and spells. I don't have any curses on me. When you get saved by the grace of God, you you already you don't have any curses on you. They don't affect you. Fourteen deliverance is to hunt down and destroy destructive habits. That's not deliverance, friend. Let me tell you what that is. That's called growing as a Christian. What they equate to demons and devils is you growing as a Christian. What do I do to walk in the Spirit? I learned to lay aside Look at this. Wherefore, seeing we all are compass about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What is that? That's laying down weights that slow us down in this life for Christ. It's laying down that sin that does so easily beset us, which is different than for all of us. It has nothing to do with, with that. It has, it has nothing to do with being delivered. It has to do with walking in the Spirit. There are certain things that you do that God's not happy about. There are certain grow it things that you need to grow through and grow in. And God's going to reveal them to you in a most painful way sometime. And you're going to have to come to grips and look in the mirror and say, you know what? I 
I got to quit doing that. I have to quit acting that way. I have to quit. I have to get that out of my character. Out of my, I, I got to break that habit. It's not a good habit. That doesn't have anything to do with deliverance. It has to do with being conformed to the image of Christ. It has to do with growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number 15, deliverance is sending back evil arrows to the senders. I don't think so. Here's what the Bible says about that. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I'm not getting into a contest with Satan. I'm to resist him steadfast in the faith. I'm to have my armor on. I'm to have my, my, uh, my shield of faith on to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I'm not shooting my arrows back at him. Number 16, deliverance is finding one's place in the market square of life. No, that's called just living in the center of the will of God. I'm just living in God's will. See, but they have to mystify and they have to turn everything into a cartoon. in order for them to enjoy the Christian life. It has to be like a, dr a, dr a dramatized version of the Christian life. Seventeen, deliverance is destruction on satanic dreams. Destruction on satanic dreams. You can't control what you dream. You're not going to be able to do that. You can do right. Have I been attacked in my dreams? You bet I have. Have, you, have I had devils come after me in my dreams? Oh, yeah. I've had a manifest in my dreams before. Oh, yeah. You better believe I have. I'd have I, I've had them change right in my dreams. You bet I have. I've had I've had them uh, try all kinds of crazy things in my dreams. It doesn't happen that often. It hasn't happened in a long time, but it's happened. Right? I've had it happen. I, I've had some, I've had to call upon the name of the Lord in my dreams. And then they all, then the dream ends like that. It's done. I've had devils manifest and get angry with me in dream. And I knew they were devils because they contorted right in front of me. Like literally morphed right in front of me. And then everything went into And that's when I'm like, that's when I knew it was getting weird. Because that's how it was. That When it gets slow like that, it's like, oh, yep, this is demonic. <laughs> that's what this is. I've, I've had it happen before. And I barely got the name of Jesus out. Gone. So I... 
I know that's real, but what they're describing is some kind of power over that, like controlling dreams in that sense. And that's lucid dreaming. That's very dangerous stuff. Deliver 18. Deliverance is to be released from the altars of affliction. Ah, wrong. Sometimes God doesn't want to deliver you. Sometimes God doesn't want to deliver you. Sometimes it's God's will for you to be afflicted. Paul said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Paul said, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Sometimes it's the will of God for you to be afflicted. And for you to stay afflicted, by the way. Paul had the messenger of the thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. But it isn't always God's will. Look what he, Paul says here. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. Sometimes God wants you to be afflicted. Let's see, hold on. Hang on a second, I'm looking for something. Here it is, James. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Uh, KLH said, Marvel and DC Comics are open doors to demons full of witchcraft, sorcery, psychics, vampires, werewolves. Yeah, they all are. That's why that, that little video we do on strong spiritual warfare illustrates what these people are and what they do. But it's God's will sometimes for you to be afflicted. So when somebody tells you, oh, you're to be delivered from all your afflictions. Well, you will be one day. One day you'll be delivered from all your afflictions, but not this day. God has a design for suffering. Uh, see my sermon that I preached. Let's see if I can find it here. On Sunday. Perfection, the purpose of Christian suffering. The will of God. God's will that you suffer. Sometimes it is God's will that you suffer.
Deliverance is to be released from witchcraft cages. Well, thank God I'm not in a cage. Deliverance is correct positioning. Deliverance is to break the chain of poverty. Wrong. Sometimes it's God's will that you be poor. Sometimes it's God's will that you be poor. It is not always God's will for men to be rich. In fact, most of God's people are not rich and never will be rich. Now, it shouldn't be for a lack of work. It shouldn't be because we're lazy. It shouldn't be because those things. But sometimes it's God's will for you to be poor. I know there's been times in my life where I had $5 in my bank. Or maybe it was in my pocket because I didn't even really have a bank account. That was after I was married. The time my wife, after I first got married, she burnt my only pizza. My DiGiorno pizza that I bought for her and I. I had no money. The last five bucks to get a DiGiorno. I remember. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. And I watched my hopes and dreams melt through the grates of the oven. All my hopes and dreams of eating pizza that night. It's not deliverance, Debbie. It's DiGiorno. <laughs> All of my hopes and dreams in that little yellow house in Bettendorf, Iowa, two doors down from the church house. I watched it drip through the grates. And that was the will of God. It was that I should be poor and have no pizza. Amazing. <laughs> Strong spiritual pizza. Sometimes it's God's will for us not to have much. We learn to take care of things better. Let's see if I can find... See if I can find that verse I'm looking for. I think it's in Proverbs. Let's see. Here it is. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Amen. I don't even know what we ate that night. I don't even remember. Maybe we tried to eat that melted pizza, Hannah. Did we try to eat that? I don't remember. Oh, it was gross. Well, maybe she was getting me back, though, because I was so broke for our, our, um, our wedding night. I took her to McDonald's at a cheap motel. <laughs> Oh, I always laugh about it. McDonald's at a cheap hotel. So, so on our anniversary back in June, on our way out, we went to McDonald's, but we had a nicer hotel. 
McDonald's in a cheap hotel. That's what we had. We had no money. <laughs> we had nothing. So I know what it's like to barely scrape by to, to, to pray in every dime. I still pray in every dime I get. But to pray in every dime... To barely have enough to cover the bills. Yet God provides. Sometimes it's God's will for you to be poor. Right? Sometimes God leaves us that way to teach us, to try us, to know what is in our hearts. My wife said, I leave the frozen pizza to my daughter. She can cook them better than I. Well, that's true about frozen pizza. But you definitely cook good homemade pizza. I think I had the best homemade pizza ever. A couple weeks ago, we made the sauce from our, my wife made the sauce from our garden. And she made the pizza and it was excellent. Absolutely excellent. But my daughters are very good cooks, and it's a good thing that I'm on keto because my daughters would make me very, very fat. Like Eglon, he was a very fat man. That was, you were there too, that's right. Pilgrim Lady was there too. My daughters, they they they're homemakers. They know how to cook, man. They they know how to make stuff. Mandy can make keto desserts, and you will not think that they were keto. You will literally think when she makes you a dessert that that has sugar in it, and it doesn't. But it is good, and tons of it. All right. Anyway, moving on to the next list now. Who needs deliverance? The first one was, what is deliverance? Now what they say in this, remember, I'm going to remind you, these are heretics that preach something very false. False deliverance ministries. Who needs deliverance? Now, number one, individuals conceived in adultery or fornication. So now you will notice individuals conceived in adultery or fornication. So now they're saying they believe in generational sins and the curse of generations. And now what they're saying to you is that that if you were if your mom and dad weren't married, then that makes you guilty before God because of that. That's ridiculous. You are guilty for your own sin. You are not guilty for the sin of others. You are not cursed because of the sin of your mother or father. That's more charismatic nonsense. When the Son of Man shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So what they say is, well, individuals conceived in adultery or fornication, yep, they're guilty. They got to be delivered. They got, so even if you're saved, oh, you got devils on you. Number two, individuals whose parents contemplated an abortion. So now the thought police comes in. What are you here? Like Catherine Crick, what are you here for? For deliverance? What are you here for deliverance for? My mom and dad wanted to abort me, but they didn't. Oh, well, then you need delivered. 
You, there's like 850,000 devils swarming around your head right now because your mom and dad had some bad thoughts. Oh, really? Me thinks you're a bunch of witches. That's what me thinks you are. Me thinks you're a bunch of little lucky leprechaun witches. That's what me thinks. Bat crazy nonsense. Bunch of spooky witches. Bunch of spooky witches. What are they trying to do? I'm going to show you what they're trying to do. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you received you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Bewitched. They're bewitched. And they want to they want to bring you look this is what they want to do Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage They're trying to put you in bondage Look at this. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Brought into bondage. That's what they're trying to do. Number three, individuals abandoned by one or more parents. Well, you got devils. Have you been abandoned by your parents? You got devils. It's kind of like you got mail. But only, only their phrase is, you got devils. You got devils. You got devils. Oh, from what? Oh, I was abandoned, abandoned by my mom and dad. One of my parents abandoned me. Oh, well, then you definitely have devils. Well, don't you know? It's in the Bible somewhere. Where? I don't know. But you got devils. That's all we're saying. Number five, or number four, individuals who have been abused as children. Oh, you automatically have devils then. No, you have unfortunate trials that you have to get through. You have unfortunate things that Christ can help you through. As your heart is sorrowful, as you've been broken, you've been abused, you've been used, you've been taken advantage of. And you need to be loved and cared for. There's nothing wrong with you. Besides, you need someone to love you like Christ loves you. You need to be loved. You don't need devils cast out of you. You need loved. That's what that means. You just need love. Christian love. Godly, wholesome, pure Christian love. That's what you need. Individuals, uh, number five, individuals raped or molested. Same thing. You don't have devils. You need to be saved, number one, by the grace of God. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're already saved and you've had, you, you unfortunately went through such terrible things, you, you don't need delivered from devils. You just need to walk with God and be healed. 
and you need to grow and you need to learn and you need loved by people. God's people. Number six, individuals whose mothers had a difficult pregnancy. Well, there you go. Right there, man. You need delivered. I'm telling you what, you're pretty wicked and you need delivered. You got devils. Why? Because you had a hard pregnancy. You got devils. If your mom had a hard pregnancy with you, it must be because it's satanic. You must be Rosemary's child or something like that. Right? Yep. Whose mother's had a... Di did your mom... Did your mom have a difficult pregnancy? Then for nineteen ninety nine, we can deliver those devils from you. You've got devils. You've got devils. You've got devils. You've got devils. You need deliverance. Individuals who almost died during the first few years of life. That's it. If you almost died as a child, well, that's almost every kid. They almost die all the time. Kids almost die every day, man. They do crazy stuff. Christine, Christine Sita asked, who comes up with this nonsense? Devils. No, this one you're going to love. Oh, man, this one you're going to love. Are you ready? Are you ready for this one? You're going to. I'm sorry. I know I'm popping cough drops here because these recolas, because my voice is still coming back. Uh, I rested it for a few days. I'm telling you, if you're ready for this. Number, number eight. Individuals who who had imaginary playmates during childhood. There you go. I knew it. I knew it. You had an imaginary friend you talked to. That's it. Absolutely. I knew Carl was possessed. I knew he talked to imaginary friends when he was a kid. I knew it. I knew there was something wrong with that guy. I knew it. Talk to his imaginary friend. I knew he did it. I know he did it. If you had an imaginary friend when you were a kid, that's right. You're possessed. And you need this Nigerian witch doctor to deliver you. That's right. Individuals who had imaginary playmates during childhood. Yep, you're possessed. Number nine. Individuals who had been chronically ill all their lives. That's it. You've been sick your whole life. You've been sick your whole life. You had sickness? Nah, you don't have sickness. You got devils. You got devils. If you had chronic sickness, like let's say you have asthma and you've had asthma your whole life, well, that's just because you got devils. You're possessed. Don't you know? That's that's exactly. I mean, well, you had asthma. You have allergies. You got devils. You have the you have the devil of asthma. Yep, you had eczema. Oh, you are definitely possessed. 
You are demons. Oh, I wish I could. If anybody could ever find me the bit video of this black guy. Oh. That guy was the funniest guy I ever. I really think that he got upset with me and took the video off. He was the funniest, and he meant to be serious, but I mocked it so bad. And he, he his video was like this. I'll show you. Hold on. Uh, let me let me get to the camera. I'll switch it around here. Let me. Let me. He was like this. He was like. When your eyes do this twitchy thing, like this, demons. When your face contorts in an unusual way, demons. When their eyebrows raise up in a certain way, demons. If I could find that guy's video, Oh my goodness. You do not know how bad I would love to find that guy's. I he took it down. I think he took it down cuz I made fun of him. I'm serious. I actually think he took it down because I made fun of it so bad. I you don't understand like cuz when I get on something like that, I will laugh my head off. Let's see if I switch that. I think I did. Yep, there we go. Got to switch back. So if you have childhood diseases, you have demons. Carl, did you ever see that video? Oh, my goodness. I laughed so hard about that video, I almost peed my pants. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It was that funny. I, I can't tell you. And you know how I love a good charismatic make of mocking video. Oh. Okay, here we go. You ready? Number 10, individuals exposed to pornography early in life. No, they just need saved by the grace of God. And they're going to have a lot of problems later on in life. I don't know the guy's name. Number 11, individuals who grew up in a war zone. Demons. Oh, you grew up in a war zone? You got devils. That's what your problem is. That's what your problem is. Number 12, individuals who have been ridiculed all their lives. Demons. Well, that makes Carl. Carl's definitely been ridiculed all his life. Pavarotti Jr. there. Definitely. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Individuals with a history of sexual perversion in their bloodline. Adultery, rape, incest. So, like, how are you going to know there was, like, all that stuff going on in your bloodline? How will you know it? How would you know if somebody was raped in your bloodline? How would you know it? 
You wouldn't. But that's what they teach. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Are you a klutz? Number 14. Individuals who have been accident prone all their lives. That's right, devils. You got devils. That's it. You got devils. Are you a klutz? Do you trip over stuff? Do you lack hand and eye coordination? Are you off balance a bit? Then you have devils you need delivered. For $19.99, we can deliver you. Yep. See, because the reason you're accident prone... Uh... Justin, we we understand the Bible says devils. We we know what they are. We we're we get it. We get it. Individuals with a history of poverty in their families. That's it. You're poor. You got devils. You're poor. So if there's a history, if your dad was poor, if your mom was poor, if your grandma was poor, if there was somebody poor in your bloodline, then you got devils. So you need delivered. Yep. Individuals who engage in lifestyles of cheating, robbing, and theft. Well, I would say you just need to repent. They would say you have devils. I would tell you you need to repent. They'd be like, you need delivered. No, you need to repent. That's what you need to do. You need to repent. You ain't going to blame your sin on devils. You need to get right with God. All oh, number 17. Individuals who are afraid of being alone. That's it. If you're if you're afraid of being alone, you need delivered. That's you you need delivered. You don't like being alone? You're afraid of it? Okay. It's because you got devils. That's what it is. I bet you didn't know that. Justin, these people don't know what deliverance is. These charismatics don't have a clue what deliverance is. Number 18. 
Individuals who are extremely uncomfortable around people. Oh, you mean you're an introvert? Yep, you got devils. You need delivered. You you need delivered. Cause you got you got devils. Cause you don't like being around people. You do got to get over it, by the way, and you got to love people and you got to put yourself around people because that's being Christ-like. But you don't blame it on devils. Right. Okay, let's see. Individuals who are intensely jealous of others. Well, there you go. If you are intensely jealous of others, I would say you're just covetous and you're breaking the commandment of the Lord and you need to repent. They would tell you. You need delivered. You need delivered. Man, I got to hurry up. This list is long. Individuals who were ever involved with the occult. I just think they need to be saved. What true biblical deliverance is found in Acts chapter 26. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Well, Justin, that's just human nature. Where are you from? As easy... GD, whatever that means. I don't know what that means, but where are you from? How'd you hear about us? Okay, here we go. Individuals who are attracted to or have gone to palm readers, satanic advisors, and psychics. Again, I would say you got to repent. Stahl went to a psychic, but doesn't say that he was possessed by devils. But he did go to hell, I believe. Individuals who were involved in abortion, they need to repent but they don't have some devil that's legally chasing them down or possessing them because they did this. No, they need to repent. They need to get their hearts right with God. And if they did repent, then the Lord will forgive them. Man, there's more. Individuals who have chronic headaches or mental confusion. Do you have chronic headaches or mental confusion? You got you got devils.
that's just it. You you got you got devils. Number 24, individuals who have a difficult time reading the Bible or praying. Oh. You mean the flesh wars against the spirit? You have a difficult time reading the Bible and praying? Oh, you can blame it on devils. You need delivered. Number 25, individuals who are afraid of trusting people or getting close to people. Really? So if you have a problem trusting people, then, yep, you need delivered. Gotcha. Individuals who, instead of going forward, are moving backward. Okay. 27, individuals who have unexplainable loss of memory. You just, if you lose your memory? Well... Oh. Some people will call it getting old. But not these people. You got devils. Individuals who should be winners but are failing. Okay. Loser by day, loser by night. Individuals whose inputs and efforts fail to get success. Number 30, individuals who are being governed by a power contrary to their will. Wow. Wow. Here you go. Individuals who were formerly rich but suddenly turned poor. Oh, did you lose all your investments and you're poor now? Well, you got devils. Your problem is. Didn't you know that? You got devils. That's your problem. Individuals whose trials refuse to come to an end. <laughs> so if God brings you through long seasons of trial and they don't end, you're possessed. Think about that for a second. Because that's what's being taught. That's what's being taught right there. You want to talk about trying to discourage somebody that's trying to walk with God and tell them, oh, you need delivered. No, you need to be faithful to the Lord. You need to be faithful to the Lord no matter what. Individuals whose trials refuse to come to an end. Individuals who have unnatural movements in parts of their bodies. So if you're, you know, something in your body twitches. Yep, you must be possessed. Might just be a muscle spasm or it might be that your nervous system is jacked up and your body's out of alignment. Michael Robinson said, I heard one say kids with autism need delivering from devils. Yeah, that's unfortunate that somebody would lie like that. That's not true. Individuals who find it difficult to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, so if I don't believe in your kooky doctrine that you make up when the baptism of the Holy Ghost has been showed like 
a few times in the scriptures and what it was for and what the purpose was, then you just need delivered. Individuals who encounter chain problems. I don't know what that is. Individuals who are constantly duped. Have you been fooled? Have you been duped? Well, then you must have devils. Individuals who have horrible experiences in their dreams. Oh, you've had nightmares and have horrible nightmares? Well, you must have devils. Because no one should have horrible nightmares like that. If you have horrible nightmares like that, then you and and you have yeah, you you've had horrible things. Individuals who have participated in non-Christian religions. They just need saved. Individuals with sick tongue. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really bad. Whatever it is, it sounds really, really bad. Okay, we're almost done, kids. Individuals having emotional disturbances. Well, I mean, you got to you need delivered because no one has emotional disturbances. Everyone has emotional disturbances. Everyone does. Individuals who suffer from restlessness. Oh, you're restless? Individuals who hear strange voices. Well, that one might be. They, they might. <laughs> if you're literally hearing strange voices, that might be. That, that might, I, might, I might agree with them on that one, maybe. One time somebody, one time somebody said to me, well, Satan wants me to betray you. Satan wants me to be Judas to you. Later on in my thoughts, I'm like, well, what are you listening to him for? That person ended up being, betraying me, by the way. Individuals who have unholy fear. Yeah, I mean, if you have fear. Look what Paul said about that. See, let me find that. Here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 7, 5. He said, for when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Within were fears. Paul dealt with fear. Individuals operating under evil covenants and curses. I would say they just need to be saved. Individuals suffering from unexplainable family breakdown. Every breakdown in a family can be explained. Every one. There's a reason it happened. There's mistakes that were made. Individuals who are engaged in profitless hard work. Individuals with inherited problems. That's all of us. We come from Adam. We inherited a sin nature. Yeah. 
Individuals who are bound by sin or Satan. Yeah, they just need to be saved. Individuals constantly harassed by evil spirits. Individuals having evil trend of problems in their families. All right, that was 50 of them. And I have one answer for you that I can tell you. Most of those things have nothing to do with being delivered from devils. Most of those things are normal human problems that people go through that they have to walk in the spirit. All human beings go through struggles and trials. Heartaches, pain, suffering, death, sickness, uh, difficulties in families, children, uh, difficulties with their children, depression, grief, pain of mind, suffering, Every human being alive goes through those things. But we as children of God who are saved by the grace of God have the Holy Ghost of God and we are to go through those things and trust the Lord through them. Can devils harass us? Yeah, they can. That's why you're told to put your armor on. Doesn't say go to a deliverance ministry. Go get delivered by Russ Dizdar and the gang. Doesn't say that at all. What does it say? It says take unto you the whole armor of God. Put on your armor and fight. That's what it says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're here, and we're going to have trials. We're going to have challenges. We're going to have battles. We're going to have things that go on. But you and I have to trust the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God. And we got to go out and we got to serve the Lord. Not everything's a devil. Not everything's a demon. However, or a devil, but however, there are things out there. Yes, there's spiritual conflict out there, but it's not deliverance from within. You don't need devils cast out of you. If you're saved by the grace of God, then you have the Holy Ghost of God and you ought to walk with the Lord and live for him every day of your life. You're not a victim, you're a victor. But these ministries make victims. They make everybody possessed. That way they can pretend like they deliver. But they can't. And they don't. All right, everybody, I got to get out of here. But it gives you an idea of more of the kooky, charismatic, crazy stuff that goes on out there. That continues to go on. Pray for our ministry. We had a great week, uh, last three weeks of evangelism. We're going to take a few weeks off of out there preaching just because of we're tired. we got a lot to do. Next, a week from this Sunday, 
a week from this Sunday, we will be celebrating our 15th anniversary, Old Paz Baptist Church. And we are looking forward to it. So you pray for us about that. That'll be a week from this Sunday coming up. And we're looking forward to that, rejoicing in all that God has done over the last 15 years and uh, seeing all the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Pray for our ministry. Pray for our church. Um, if you'd like to give to our ministry, you can PayPal us at salvationpreacher at gmail.com. It, you can use Apple Pay. You can do Venmo. You can do all kinds of other uh, different uh, cryptocurrencies and all kinds of Coinbase, all kinds of different things like that, if the Lord so leads you to. If he doesn't, that's okay too. Just pray for us. Pray that God would use somebody else, amen, to provide uh, and to meet our needs and, and everything else. So, praise the Lord for God's goodness to us, though, and, and for all his protection and kindness. All right? Uh, no, we will not be preaching at the zombie pub crawl this year. Uh, it's a wicked... They're not having it because... Minnesota, Minneapolis is a very dangerous place. So we'll be doing the two parades this year and whatever else. There's a, there's other Halloween events that we'll be doing. So anyway, just remember, don't believe all this hocus pocus nonsense that these charismatics throw out. You believe the Lord and you stick to the book. When you find people majoring on things that are that 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 are not in the scriptures, and there's just things that the Bible talks about there that were limited for a time, and that's not the main focus of the scriptures, don't get yourself consumed with those things. Follow the book. Live for Christ. Be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow the Lord. Follow the Bible. Obey the Lord. Follow the teachings of the scriptures. It's enough for us, friend. It's enough for us. We don't need all this extra stuff. You don't need all those things. God's word is plain and clear. Keep it that way. All right, everybody. God bless you all. Take care. Have a good night. By the way, I'll be preaching tonight, uh, 7.30 p.m. Central Time on sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. So if you want to watch the Wednesday evening service, uh, the Wednesday evening sermon, you can watch it there or listen to it there on Sermon Audio, okay? All right, everybody, God bless you. Have a good night.